Um, so yeah, I'm Zoe and I'm off-site curatory, so projects. Am I picking up this mic? Because it's okay. Um, I've been there for the last year, so I'm quite a new member of the team. So for those of you that don't know Eastside, um, we're located in Birmingham's Digbeth and we've been there for 10 years. Um, and we're an artist-led organisation. In fact, we call ourselves an artist-led multiverse. Um, and we do many things, and we've done that since the beginning. Um, so I think the first, for the past 10 years, we've operated as a site of production, so always asserted that we've done that, and we've kind of considered the building uh, and the exhibitions produced within it, uh, but the project itself as an artwork in its own right and many of the projects evolve over time and adapt and have adapted the interior and exterior architecture of the space leaving layers and temporary and permanent residues here are some of them and so uh Alongside that practice, we've created these manuals. So there's a couple there. So we've, we're kind of into our seventh edition now. Um, so we produce users manuals to the organization and to the activities that we do and have updated them and added as we've developed new, new projects. Um, the sixth edition of the users manual was this one that's on the screen. It's called The Artist and the Engineer and it investigated the history and relevance of Birmingham's emblem um, of the artist and the engineer, looking at how creativity and development have been interlinked and run parallel to one another. Um, and it's kind of in the form, I can pass a copy around in a bit, in the form of a children's book. Uh, so it's like quite easy to digest in very plain terms. Um, and in it, we assert that we believe that art and artists could be involved in every level um, of planning and operation of a city and that we wish to work with others um, to project this policy um, on the total urban environment of a city. Alongside that activity, we've also increasingly been working on projects in the public realm. So this is uh, Richard Wood's um, Soup Tudor that was in Kings Heath. Um, and yeah, there's been various projects that we've been working in. So kind of over the past 10 years, there's been an increasing dialogue about how we work beyond the gallery. Um, and make art public, uh, take it, working with the public and taking art to the public. So in 2016, um, we started making some of the conversations that we've been having public. So this is a draft uh, um, prepared by Ivan Morrison, um, which kind of, can you read that? It's, <laughs> this is in quite interesting typography, <laughs> um, uh, which kind of, asserts some of our ideas uh, and it was like kind of the starting point really and from this we um, then began um, talking to Impact Hub in Birmingham so we kind of we'd, we'd been following the research that they'd been undertaking mapping vacant um, council-owned uh, space in and around the city and recognizing um, that there was a real lack of housing in Birmingham as there are in most large-scale cities but as the second largest city it's kind of pretty evident um, and so collectively we put this document together and formed the Eastside Alternative Development Corporation um, so within this document we assert that um, we want to approach the housing crisis in a holistic, systematic manner, um, from land identification, financing and planning approval to design and construction. We want to make it accessible and affordable and secure housing um, and in a, in, because there's, uh, housing is one of the biggest problems that we face. As a collective of active citizens, we want to offer an alternative uh, to the standard version of housing as real estate and instead produce housing as home, workspace and public artwork. Um, our vision is one which sees participation and engagement as core principles rather than add-ons and we're working towards a model which is financially sustainable but focused on the creation of social, cultural and environmental capital. Um, so this document was um, shared with Birmingham City Council <laughs> 
um, to communicate our ideas and to try and uh, to attempt to work towards obtaining land and to take on collectively um, as a community land or under the community land trust model. Um, we were then invited by Birmingham City Council to put together um, this, this document, which could be shared even wider. And again, it was proposing that a culture-led solution uh, to creating more housing stock in the city. Um, and it was, yeah, we created it as an advocacy document and it's, it's been used as such to try and affect policy change and thinking uh, in city planning and development in Birmingham, but also elsewhere. Um, during this period, we also created production shows. So this was in 2016, 17, production show Artist House uh, featuring proposals and propositions um, for artist housing by Hardeep Pandal, Heather and Ivan Morrison, Honor Gavin, we, we, well, we collaborated with Honor Gavin and Theatre Mundy and also had proposals from Jasleen Kerr, Laura Aldridge, Liam Gillick, Rosalie Schweiker, An Art in Crisis. Um, and we used the show to present all of these different proposals and initiate a public dialogue around artist housing. Uh, this shows some of the... Um, <laughs> Yeah, so this shows some of the map is Impacts Hub research, in, um, but we also contributed to it in mapping the local area to us in Digbeth. Um, and what we proposed um, was to use the kind of the small sections of land which was owned, which were owned by the council, but were less viable to large developers. Um, so they were kind of for one or two dwellings rather than kind of a set of dwellings. Um, and what we were also encouraging within it was uh, to start a self-building movement across the city, um, but one that was led by artists and cultural organisations. So this is kind of still alive. It's a, it's a proposition and it's still live and we're seeing like where it can go. Um, but the, the we, we, we stated that the process um, would be public in pre-planning, build and use. And it would be an exhibition of home through practice, not theory. Utilising exi existing statute and the power of open data, open design, artist-led practices and self-construction, we believe we can create an innovative contribution to the housing crisis. Um, we believe that these houses would, will uh, enrich the neighbourhoods and that they are in and start a movement which demonstrates that the city's desire to see all citizens benefit from housing growth. I think we're kind of projecting some of these desires potentially um, uh, and not just the developers and the landlords. So yeah, from all of this discussion, which the council did listen to, but I think it kind of came simultaneously with uh, cuts within the council. So it's kind of the the conversation is ongoing, but it's kind of protracted, I guess. Um, we were also, we, we started um, to work on other projects. So we were approached uh, in 2017 um, by Cherwell District Council in Banbury and their then consultant Ixia Public Art Think Tank to collaborate on developing a public art strategy and a series of public artworks for the new Thousand Home Longford Park housing development, uh, which is on, uh, public land, so on a public park, which is being developed, um, but is being developed at the moment by Barrett Homes, Bovis Homes, Taylor Wimpy, so the big guys, kind of a big consortium. Um, and something that was quite unusual about this was that the council had already been transferred all the Section 106 money, so we could kind of work with the council and um, kind of be a bit arm's length with the consortium. So we kind of had a greater amount of freedom to develop the public art strategy um, whilst the houses were being built. And we also had guaranteed access to the 106 funds. They were already secured. Um, so we nominated five artists, Nick Deshay, um, Richard Woods, Rosalie Schweiker and Heather and Ivan Morrison on the basis of their previous work to develop a range of proposals in response to the site, um, which aim to question the nature of what public art can be and produce useful artworks which would contribute to creating a sense of place. Um, and so this map shows where they are. 
Um, and despite the dates on the poster, it's still very much a live project. So the timescale of this has also extended in relation to the building uh, and landscaping schedule of the development and also um, affected by planning process. Um, and so, yeah, building on conversations we'd been having specifically with Heather and Ivan about artist housing and um, stemming from their kind of ongoing practice uh, in creating large scale, socially useful and beautiful uh, architectural forms in the public realm. Um, they began creating a proposal for an artist house in Banbury as part of park life. Um, and they did this through site visits, meeting the residents that were already on site and uh, yeah, doing another charrette with them to kind of inform what the architecture of the house uh, might be. Um, and so in last year, we, we kind of finalized the plans for the house. So this is the house in sitting in the landscape. So it's like a short walk from the, the main estate. Um, and the ambition is that the exterior of the building would function as a public artwork in its own right, but it will also function as a home in a production space um, with a rolling roster of artist tenants that would stay in, in the house um, for a maximum four year tenancy and pay a fixed affordable rent. Um, so it's, uh, they, they would live in the space. It's not a kind of a, a residency where there's an expected output, but they would be encouraged to be part of the community there um, or invited to do that. Um, this, this design also um, positions the artist as a key worker and a central member of any existing or new community. Um, and it's designed to be sustainable um, and an affordable build and a fast build. Um, so to set kind of a prototype and a precedent for housing that could be applied across um, new building, not just for artists, houses or cultural spaces and could be applied in every city in the UK and potentially every new housing development. Um, the design um, has, has been further in informed by the planning process. So we've taken on board, so we, we, we did, we've kind of, we're just about to submit a new um, planning application, which uh, after submitting one originally, where we've taken on board uh, comments from the local city council and also the growing number of tenants which are on site because of some skepticism about kind of a, a, a public artwork being on the land. And um, But there's also equally, there's a lot of enthusiasm from the community association, which is, which was, set up with the help of Rosalie Schweiker's um, project. Um, so the ambition is that we'll submit the planning application soon uh, with a view to hopefully building um, towards the end of the year and with the first artist resident moving in next year. Um, this is a project that we did earlier in the year at Art Course. So it was another artist housing show, but artist housing prototype show. So we shared some of the proposals that artists um, have created with us so far, but also shared some of the planning, um, some of the kind of some of the process as well, which which wasn't underway in when we did the earlier artist housing show. And then we also produced our uh, most recent manual and the first animated manual, um, which is our Eastside's housing manual, which I'm going to play now. An artwork can be a thing placed here or there. Connected to its surroundings. Emitting heat. Attracting people, supporting life. An artwork can be a place capable of sheltering people and other things. A shelter, a cave, a house, a village, a city. Many artworks placed here and there to be used in many ways. To live, to work, to think, to rehearse, to be social. An artwork as a home. Art does not need a home. Art is a home website so have a look and all our all of our manuals are downloadable as pdfs on from the website too thanks <laughs> mm -hmm.